Welcome to yet another Pattern of the Month film, uh, our number 38. And um, today I'm going to do, going to tie a fly on the classic black and yellow combination. Those of you following know that I fish black and yellows in my D ships and in my D Samurais and black and yellow is not only classic, it's also one of the really, really good color combinations. Uh, today I'm going to tie a fly called Hamilton and this fly, like uh, a lot of my patterns, originates from the Alta, the mighty river with the big fish. I've been fortunate enough to fish there some 35 years now, I think. And um, this was uh, maybe 20 years ago, 25 years ago, my friend Frank uh, told me over the phone when we were going to, to prepare for, for the season's fishing, tie a fly with copper, yellow and black. And I did, and a bit of blue, he said that too. And I, uh, I did it and uh, it ended up with a fly called Hamilton. And if I remember right, that, that year we didn't catch any fish on that. It was not uh, before I came on the barrel a bit a few years later and I had some really good fishing in the place called Hamilton, which is on the lower Barilla in Alta. And the, 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 on this fly and the fly got its name. And um, I have another funny story actually, me and my old buddy Leif Stavmo fished on in Southso and um, I think it started by me catching a few fish on this fly and then when it was his turn, we were sharing a rod, he went over to my rod and cut the leader and took my fly and he caught a fish and then I went back to his rod and took my fly back and uh, we went on like that for what I think is one of the best days I had on the Alta. Uh, I think we on one rod share, one shared rod uh, landed nine big fish and I think we had three over 15 kilos. I think Lake broke his personal uh, best two times in one day and it was just one of these days for magic fishing day. So, and the fly was Hamilton, a bit smaller like that than this, but not much. Um, and I will uh, tie it in a little special way. We call it classics. This is going to be a bit different than I normally do. And I'm show you. So let's put this away and let's start. And I'm going to start by showing you one of our new things that actually is coming out now. Uh, these fantastic uh, uh, leather wallets been waiting for all the tools, I think almost two years. And uh, it's just a toolkit where you have all our tools. And um, as we speak, they are on the way here, uh, our last tools, which is our bobbin and also the cutter. And I'm going to use the cutter today and I will use a uh, bobbin and I will use, uh, I have a scissor there and I will use our hackle ploy. It's a pretty neat way of having your stuff in good order. I said that and it's chaos on my table even before I start time. So I start and today I'm going to use our black uh, medium and our fluorescent blue uh, extra small and I start by cutting this I'm going to cut it in on three centimeters meaning this um, uh, will be uh, a fly that will be end up being around eight I would say all to get the hook into the center of the fly. I take a bit of uh, extra small and uh, you saw me cut that little angle on the medium 
and I make sure the extra small goes well into the medium before I take my thread. I need to grease this a bit and I put some thread over the part that I cut meaning I will have the medium hold the extra small and here I don't have to be very careful with with the th with the th turns of thread I can put quite a bit on moving the thread back and then I take a mirage and mirage on black is is a quite nice combo the mirage turns almost green on the black tubing and I save about five to six four to six millimeter of tubing and I turn the mirage front pull it hard and tie it in good with the mirage is that you can stretch it a bit I had a, a little uh, exhibition tying the other day and we talked a lot about threads and uh, the important thing with the thread is that you have a thread that flattens out like our um, 12 o or our 8 o do that too but that the important is that you are brave enough to pull it to stretch out the thread so you can put this thread on while it's stretched out that way it will hold the material grab it and keep it in place um, uh, all the time small tricks but the important tricks the tire plies that will hold up okay so I'm not going to use any tail on this fly I'm going to put on uh, two of our hollow braids I'm going to use uh, our gold Alta gold and our nasty rusty color and I always start tying in the one that's going to be my ribbing which on this fly is going to be the gold one and I tie it in underneath and then I take my uh, nasty rusty and I tie it in on top also underneath back down the thread a bit and then I move up to about where I have half of the body then I tie it in by pulling and being careful in the uh, rear end of the fly so I can overlap going front can even back down pull it so I get a uh, body that will taper and the good thing with our SSS braid is that it's thin enough uh, to overlap without you seeing it when the fly is ready cut this away a bit not too close it's better to have a little um, little margins for the material to move then I'm going to use dubbing and I think I had another dubbing here somewhere uh, because I use both our regular dubbing and our glitz it disappeared here in the mess there we go regular dubbing built on a, a very translucent fiber and our uh, glitz dubbing that is a built on three different kinds of flash materials and um, the good thing with glitz is that the fibers are very long so I can brush it out put a little bit on at the time and uh, back down covering the thread spin it on important that you actually spin your fingers one way and don't do it back and forth if you just spin them on like this uh, the long fibers will tangle up meet the thread and twist around it and you will have uh, a very easy dubbing taking a little bit more here and uh, you 
have to be careful here too. Never take too much material, but if you take too little, it's gonna look too skinny after it's been brushed. So it's good to uh, overdo it a little bit. I will save about a little more, about three to four millimeter of the medium tubing here, uh, because uh, like on all uh, my flies, I try to tie all, as much as possible onto the medium. It will leave me with a lot stronger fly than if, if I go out on the extra small, it will uh, move more. And a little coffee. Almost nothing left. Okay, so body hackle. And here I'm using uh, a yellow, like almost uh, golden yellow dyed um, badger feather. Badgers with a uh, with, uh, black center. I like a tie a lot with badgers or with uh, um, speckled feathers to get a lot of live in my flies. Uh, cochleons are superb too. And I tie this in underneath. And those of you who've seen me tie this kind of fly know that when I do my uh, hackling, I never start going back like this because I get too few fibers here. I always start by putting one turn before I back down and I pull uh, the hackle into the dubbing and I make sure when I go on to the, uh, to the braid, I pull it hard also on the braid so I'm sure it will not start to move. Then I take the second braid and I spin it up and uh, tie it in and crossing over my hackle every turn, meaning that if I have a, a fish, if it's a good fish, it's okay, but if it's just a little small, small sea trout that will take the feather and break it, the feather here can't unwind. It will all only uh, open up a little bit and the fly will still be good to fish. I take away the tip and instead of taking this away, I move my thread a little front and I take it and I pull it back and I double it up. This way, this can't slip and I cut it. Take my brush and um, you think this looks nice. Uh, I would say it's no use to use dubbing if you don't brush it. And uh, uh, our little uh, Fitz brush here, it, it's a mean one. It grabs uh, the flashy fibers and pull them out and I can have those blend together with my hackles, making a very translucent body, but also a body that reflects quite a lot of light. Okay, so now I um, will start with the wing and this time I'm gonna do it a little bit differently. Uh, I will put the full wing on and uh, starting with our Angular HD, which is a heavier uh, flash material, not as heavy as our flash, but it's heavier, uh, a little thicker. And uh, like all our HD materials, they are mixed in different diameters with different colors. And uh, Maybe that's the biggest difference between a lot of our flashes and other flashes on the market is that there are five different fibers in each pack. Uh, the different colors will uh, make it look more alive, I think. 
Okay, so I take this and I hold it and I take my scissor and I pull and cut to get different length on these fibers. And I don't want to have them too long, not behind the hook, not so they can start tangling in the hook. So I do it like that and then it's time for uh, my first wing and on this one I use two colors a little depending on material I'm going to tie in two or three bunches of hair I cut it off close use my brush to uh, take away the the part I don't want but also to untangle this so I get all the fibers like this being on each side of each other instead of being messy. Move my fingers up and pull out tapering this. And um, one of the most important things on a fly like this is actually to taper the wing in the right way. If you don't taper you will see how the fly will not swim when it gets in the water. I hold it quite wide like this, about half a centimeter, pull in my finger, put it on top, push it down, move to the other fingers and tie it in. And here I can put a few turns on I look so the thread going this way sometimes pulls down the fibers on the side so the fly is uneven. And I don't want that. So, and then I take this, pull it up and twist it a little bit and cut off. And here I don't have to be really careful to cut this really close. Good to have a good scissor, but, but uh, you don't have to cut it really close because we're gonna have some hot cuts there too. Maybe I should say something about quite Quite some time ago I talked about our crooked scissor how good it is to have it and put it in your hand like this and uh, the twist on it means that I don't have to cut like this I can uh, work down here with my elbow and tie you if you tie a lot of flies it's a one hell of a difference okay so I'll take a little more uh, flush and this time I go on our regular angel hair take a few fibers pull them in make sure they're spread one or two turns and turn them and uh, double them back make sure I don't have too many fibers in one place hold it and cut them pull if I get one or a few that's too long, I can always uh, adjust that afterwards when the fly is ready, like this hanging out here. I've seen that in some of the films that are flashing on your side, and uh, normally I twist this, but don't do it now to lose focus for you guys. Okay. And the next color is black. I'm going to do this now in a little different way. I will um, take a bunch of air now that is a little bit less than I need. And I will uh, uh, do the same, untangle this, tie it in, and I'm going to put on a small bunch of hair, uh, long hair on top to make this fly taper in a nice way. And you can see how this spreads out. I again look so I have a good taper on this wing before I put it in. Look at the length and then now it doesn't need to be that super long. And I tie it in. And you will also find that if you brush it it's much easier to get an even wing than if you don't brush it. Cut this away. You can split it and cut uh, it in two or three or as much as you want actually. 
Then I'm going to add a little bit of blue. And uh, if I look at all my patterns, uh, I actually tie quite a little bit with blue. I have not many flies with a lot of blue in them. But here I want to pimp this up a little bit with some uh, fibers of blue. Just because Frank ordered from the start and it turned out to work very well. Okay, and then I take a piece of hair that is uh, longer. And the reason I didn't use this on, on the full wing is that this uh, is quite straight. And uh, the way I want it is that I want it to be, uh, to get a nice drop shape. And if my hair that I tie in is too straight, see I use few fibers, I don't get the tapering or the, I don't get the, the volume of the fly and the, and the drop shape that I want. And I take a few here and I pull them in, tie them in. One thing when you tie in a lot of material like this, different bunches, different material, is that you, you have to focus on getting all the materials to be put on top of each other. So you don't put one there and one there and one there and one there and you will have a long piece where you tie in material because when you twist that, uh, turn the fly you're gonna have a lot of of exposed tying thread meaning the fly will uh, not be very strong okay like that and uh, if I decide to do only two bunches of hair here decide my black will be good I will put the blue on now but since I put a little bit of black like this on top, it's better for me to have the blue inside of the, of the fly. Then I use a bit of peacock and I'm going to take one that we uh, have a blue dyed one. And uh, you will find all these colors of peacock in our peacock packs. We have both the bleached ones and like this one, it, this is just dyed natural, not bleached to start with. And I normally tie in three to five. Here I have a bit too many. And uh, I can split these, take away the broken one. There's always a few broken ones. Here is another broken one. And we take that away and it leaves me with four. Move my fingers out in the end, spread them. Look at the length. I want the peacock to be as long as the longest strands. And I hold them in and I just put them on like this and try not to have the peacock cross each other. That's why I I split them out like this. See, so I don't get the hair too far down there. I have a little hair that is down on the side, but this looks nice to me, I think. And the peacock is out there where it should be. And I cut it off. Now I take a little bit of glue and uh, those of you who've seen me know that I use support. This is a new bottle. I have to be careful here. You see it's coming on this little brush and I just put on a little bit of glue here to fix the wing. And uh, this turns this part of the fly from being the weakest to be the strongest actually. Okay, jungle cock and uh, those of you waiting, we'll have to wait a little bit longer for our uh, substitute. And uh, those of you who've seen me tie with the natural feathers before knows that I, 
I use my Cytis and I have uh, legal feathers. I don't want to do things the wrong way. Pretty straight feather. I will take this and I will form it on my thumbnail and pull it and get a feather that will, will follow the wing in a nice way. I will tie in it about as long as the plastic, meaning the tubing, which means I use quite a bit longer jungle cocks than most people, but um, not bigger feathers, meaning that I'll let the feather, the full feather, follow the wing. And the way I'm tying here, I'll have to look from the top here to get this as long. With this technique I tie here where I tie in the full wing before I'm hackling. It means I have to be um, careful so I don't use too short uh, view turns of thread back there. Uh, because if I do, I will cover up all the jungle cock with, uh, with the hackles. So, it's important to get the, the eye of the feather quite far back. Okay, so I'm gonna do now a bit differently. Those of you who've seen me tie my classics knows that I hackle and I used a little black uh, last wing there to divide the hackle and make a classic approach to it. This is actually what what I, when I started tying like this, I called them pussy style. Uh, and uh, what I do is that I make the fly ready and then I put quite a big hackle in front and the hackle will help get me the perfect drop shape that I like. And today I'm going to use three different materials, three different hackles. And um, it's because I want to have uh, uh, different colors, but also I'd like to have a lot of motion, a lot of motion on the fly. So I start by preparing one of my um, ostrich feathers like this and since I want to have few strands I strip one side and pull back do like I do with all hackles I create a little triangle and the little triangle is what I tie in and I pull it down on the side there and then I use my hackle plier the good thing with our plier is that it's also flexible with the rubber so you're not going to pull off the feather and uh, I tie this in and I do one full turn and that's all I need and since it's heavy it's also good that I can let go of this it won't uh, start moving and then I take my thread and I move my thread down make sure where I want the thread to divide this so I get even uh, amount of fibers on the fly and then I take this away and I hold it and uh, put in a few more turns before I just cut this away and as you can see I uh, used little too long there uh, very few fibers should be even and uh, you have to pull them a little bit to see where they are attached on the fiber and these will add a lot of motion but also add to this drop shape uh, then I'm gonna take um, actually prepared today I have all my feathers here normally I look for everything I take a, 
a fastened rump feather and I strip it off and here I'm going to use both sides of the feather uh, and um, this should be shorter uh, than the ostrich so the colors are seen I have the yellow and then covered up with the black and I'm going to put a bit of blue on top and that's going to show the fibers are going to show behind the, the first uh, the first colors is going to be shown behind the, the one I tie in again here I use plier and uh, it's easier for me to use pliers when I have these going around like this in front I think and uh, when I have two sides of a feather I always double by pulling this back holding these fibers away from the front meaning that I'll get only uh, fibers on one side of the feather and tie it in and I tie I pull quite a bit here and you could see how this moved a little bit and that's on the thread just going straight down on the plastic and now I pull it to straighten it out a little bit so I don't get this to be loose because then it will uh, probably start to move on my fly. A little bit of blue and uh, uh, again a bit shorter. And here I, uh, I use some of the soft on the soft tackle. And um, sometimes I actually tie this with uh, um, a peacock body feather here they are they have a fantastic shine to them but they are also now tricky to get hold of and uh, since uh, our packs consists of the soft tackle I decided to also tie with the soft tackle and most of the time when I when I do this for um, for my fishing flies I actually use the soft tackles. I can also use a feather that is hard for me to see here I'm getting old. Um, I can also use uh, one that is uh, a grizzly that is dyed and I double this again hold back make sure I get all the fibers on one side and I tie it in Put my finger on top and pull it and uh, stretch it and then a few turns here and we are almost done and the thing with the tying the what I call pussy style is that uh, it's like a classic uh, fly with a round Huckle in front of the wing and to get this uh, to move and to create the turbulence I need I always do this I can't see here too much stuff um, I always do this with our with our turbos uh, and uh, on a flight this size I could use the extra small um, Oh, uh, uh, the micros if I want to have a slimmer fly because it's the diameter of the cone that decides how much it opens up and how wide the fly will be and how fat it will be in the front and since this is quite big I'm doing an extra small here not the micro little support a little glue and I put the glue away from the hackle Pull it back, take the thread and pick up a little bit of glue, take the cone and since there are a little extra glue there, I twist it when I turn it on, so I spread the glue. So I take this, pull it down and I twist it on and take away the thread. 
And there's many ways of, of uh, melting this. Some people, they actually keep the needle inside when they melt. Uh, and when they cut, I don't do that. I do like this. I take it out of the vise. I put my finger on for support and I cut it about three mil. Take the lighter, black lighter, a bit of black in the fly here today. And I just melt this down a little careful like this. And make sure that I have enough plastic there to hold my cone. And uh, since I hold it up, I get a nice hole in the fly like this. So, how did this turn out? Well, I'm going to show you here, put it on again, how uh, the hackles here will add a lot of motion to the fly. But also remember that when it comes to to, to uh, ostrich, the small pieces on this will slim down when they are wet. So this will disappear and they will have quite a bit less volume to them. So if you want to tie a fly that the way it looks in the water, it needs to look a lot bulkier here or it will slim down and the hackles will almost like disappear. Did it turn out good? What do you guys think? I think it turned out really good. Hamilton, black and yellow fly, like the classic Jock Scott colors, the copper body or nasty rusty copper colored uh, body with the black and yellow and then just a little bit of blue in the front there. Fly that's been in my box now ever since that uh, first time on the Alta. And uh, is it a good Alta fly? I think it's a superb Alta fly. Uh, is it good elsewhere? I think it's good on all rivers where you have uh, a little bit of color to the water. Alta is kind of humus colored and uh, I think uh, the good, the yellow will break through. The black and the yellow uh, uh, wing against the black wing will get a good contrast. And you have a little sparkle in humus colored brownish colors. So this goes in my box. It's uh, Saturday, it's the end of April. We're getting into May and actually today uh, my phone rang and I had a friend uh, telling me that uh, today or was it yesterday maybe they lost the first uh, first fresh um, big salmon on the Alta and um, he's now out fishing and uh, I plan to go there and uh, then I will leave for the UK to fish some in Scotland I'll be on the spay in May and next time we do a film, I'll let you know how I got on. And uh, I hope you like the time and uh, that uh, maybe you think there's an option for you to tie this style, even on the classic wing with the hackles in front. And um, that you will go out and chase some big silvery fish. So. Thank you very much for watching this and uh, as I always say, next time we're gonna do something completely different.